I think Stevie G probably has one or two. I, he would, I'd say. I'll give you his address. I have that. Stevie loved him, like. Anyway, this is Laura. Thanks so much. Thanks for coming. 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 Thanks for and uh, attend the, the launch of this fantastic exhibition. Uh, my name is Crow and I'm the head of research collections um, with responsibility for supporting the exhibitions. But um, what you see behind me is, is not my work. Um, so I'm going to start by saying a few words of thanks, which is probably not the usual thing to do, but I think it's really important in this instance. Um, the first people I'm going to thank are, are curators. Uh, Siobhan Bardsley and Fiona Mahoney. <laughs> You've you put in an unbelievable amount of work over the last number of years to not only establish this project but actually bring this exhibition here uh, and uh, to, to UCC Library. Um, tremendous determination, persistence, but also an amazing amount of creativity. And you can see that the design is actually fair design. So I uh, really, really want to congratulate them for all that work. Um, I'd also like to thank all of you people, many of whom were involved or uh, in some way either as, as creators or writers for fanzines, but also people who collected fanzines. I want to thank you. Um, I want to thank Conan um, and his team at UCC for supporting this. Exhibition, and it was a bit of a, a risk, I think, on their part because it was all taken by my work hard. And um, so, thank you very much for that. <laughs> and, um, I would like to thank John for doing the music today. Thank you very much, John. Um, <laughs> and the Archive for doing the soundtrack that we usually have in the background of the exhibition, but not today. 
Um, I'd like to thank my sister Fiona who designed <coughs> not only the exhibition here, the whole lot, and she designed the, the fanzine as well that we made especially for today, um, which is called, called um, Flying Columns. So pick up the copy. <laughs> their fanzines and their connections and lent their connections. Most importantly, the fanzine creators that I've made, that made the exhibition really come alive for me because knowing where they came from and the reason that they were produced was very important. And so I want to thank everybody for trusting me like that. Thank you. Just very briefly, my own kind of entry into fanzines are, I suppose, magazines for fans. They're magazines fans who don't want to read normal magazines, they want to basically hear the shit that the record company doesn't want to tell them when it comes to music. I remember the late 70s, the first one I came across, I was a David Bowie fan and I could never find anything about him in any newspapers. So somebody told me about this thing called the Bowie Bureau, which was done by two girls from the Isle of Man from their front room on an A4 type sheet of paper. So I signed up and every two months this thing would come in the door and it told me exactly what I wanted to know. That was it. The first one, the first two I came across in Cork, I suppose, were, um, I remember Blake's Clink Clink Face, and I remember the famous um, Nun Attacks interview, and I remember living up, up, living up in the north side of Blackpool, there was a gang of us sat together in school who loved all this kind of music. I couldn't believe that people in Cork were writing about this music, let alone people were and I, and I can remember reading that interview and that it really, really mattered, you know, I mean, I mean we took this so seriously, you know, and, and rightly so be, be, because, as was mentioned earlier, all of these things are, are, they provided a window into something that was very small and that was very not of the mainstream at the time and, and that did not get exposure or a voice in mainstream media. I mean, as the years went on and I kind of got involved in, in running record shops and stuff like that, now this is in the age before social media, so fanzines were absolutely invaluable. If you were selling records that you could never hear on the radio, then these things, fanzines that, that would tell you about this kind of music were invaluable because it brought people into the shop and it, it created this whole little counterculture that was based around zines, around shops, around gigs, around various pubs that people used to go to. And it, it like, we would have, in Comet, we could have 15 or 20 fanzines on sale at one time, which was a pain in the ass because it was a tiny shop and you couldn't swing a cat in there. But still, it, it, it was, you know, it, it was brilliant. And like, I mean, just to kind of, just to finish up, it, it's, I think it's very appropriate and it's very apt that this exhibition is happening this particular year in Cork because I think for a certain scene in Cork this has been a very nostalgic year. Um, Michael Disney played their farewell gig this year in Cork. It's the 30th anniversary of the death of Finbar Donnelly and we just had the gig recently in, the, um, in Cypress Avenue. I can remember selling old magazine on the streets in Don Square, I think about, I don't know if it was 1980, 81 or 82. I